Williamsport, Tennessee, about an hour outside of Nashville, and I'm at Farmer's Friend LLC, the company that makes the Quick Cut Greens Harvester and a few other awesome innovative tools. We're also this this place is also near a farm, which is Jonathan Dysoner's family farm, Bountiful Blessings, and that's the farm you saw in the intro. And so I'm going to talk to Jonathan about some of the stuff they're innovating and where they're going with this company. So we're in the warehouse, yeah. and uh, tell us about. I'm interested to know kind of the story of the greens harvester because there, there's a there's it's a lot of hearsay. Some people say different things about how it started. I'd, I'd love to know. How, how did it start? Yeah, well, when I was 15, I went and visited Elliot Coleman's farm um, up in Maine, and he kind of gave me the the kick in the pants. Go develop a greens harvester; it's needed. Um, you know, we can't make money on our hands and knees harvesting. Yeah. So I I knew that because I'd harvested a lot on my hands and knees, and so I took that and really tried to run with it. And at the time, I was uh, about 15, and didn't really have the experience. Or, knowledge and really know what to do but I had a, yeah. I kind of have a lot of practical skills so I had a lot of cool ideas and, and stuff but um, it just took a while and then with some help of a retired engineer friend um, we were able to bring it to market in 2012 and that was when it first appeared in the Johnny's catalog yeah exactly yeah and uh, it, it harvested great but it was uh, it was terrible to try to manufacture. There was about almost just under 300 individual parts that we were either uh, making by hand or, or just little hardware pieces that we were purchasing. And uh, like 300 parts on every single unit. And it was unbelievable amount of time. We didn't yeah. make any money the first year. Really? Because um, I had that first one. Yeah, we sold yeah. about uh, almost 300 of them, I think. Yeah. And uh, it was just unbelievable. I worked so many hours that first year. Yeah. Um, and then I decided that's just... It's it's ridiculous. We got to simplify it. So we simplified yeah. the design, really uh, dialed it in to where it, it did the same job yep. um, with a lot less components and a lot yep. less complexity. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So that was crucial. And, yep. and then from there, we've just um, continued to fine tune it, um, work out little flaws and, and weaknesses, um, and you know, still now we're we're fine tuning stuff. I mean, yeah. we just made a uh, change recently to switch over to a stainless steel drive shaft. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, just little things here and there. We get enough feedback, and we say, oh, okay, that's a, a reoccurring problem. We exactly. Need to address that. It's um, great that you guys are innovate enough to take that feedback from the marketplace now and change because yeah, exactly. this is I see a lot of companies not doing this and they're going to stifle innovation and they're going to get left behind so yeah. it's it's cool yeah. that you guys are doing that so um, you know you guys got the greens harvester what else what's your kind of like what's the thing right now that you're, you're pushing that's like the next item yeah um, well the the next big item we want to bring um, bring to market and that's going to be really soon is the flame meter. Uh, yeah. and we're working on some other stuff, like uh, commercial microgreens harvesters and stuff, yes. um, which I think there's a lot of need for and, and potential. But at this point, um, the price tag on those is so high, I don't really feel like it's really going to it's, it's not going to be viable for a lot of people. Yeah. And I really want to focus on the small scale um, organic farms. Yeah. And so I think the, a huge need is, is flame weeders. Flame weeders yeah. will be amazing. And yeah. then another one that's high on my list is uh, um, just a really solid commercial sale. It's been a, you know, you yes. don't have to hand crank, yep. but you don't have to hack the top off of the washing machine. Yep. And, and like, uh, like we did. <laughs> so um, that's definitely something that's high on our list that we'll hopefully start prototyping here in a couple months. And, and how are the, so we talked before about the Caterpillar tunnels. How are those going right now? Really when we good. showed up, you were just shipping one to Idaho, and uh, yeah. so where somewhere else around here? Um, Ohio. <coughs> Ohio. Yeah. yeah. We, we've uh, we've sold about uh, 30 of them, I think. Uh, wow. And we launched it um, in the first part of September. Yeah. And so it's. I would say. Uh, yeah, it's been very successful for the first, uh, you know, just a couple months of the launch. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that it, it really fills a, a niche, a need for a lot of people because, um, you know, there's a lot of people getting into farming that don't really have all the practical skills to go out and just bend pipe and drill this and cut and, that. Or don't have the time. Or, or, or not, you know, because reality is you don't really save that much money by doing it if you could just buy a kit. It's so true. Um, yeah. And so we were able to put together that kit that really, for the price tag, um, you can't really make anything cheap. Yeah, that's right. Um, and yeah. so you buy the kit, you set it up in a couple hours, and, and you have a great product that um, is just, it's easy. Um, Perfect. So 
you know, so far it's been great. I think I think it's going to be a big product. We're really excited to see what the, how that goes over the next year. Yeah, because I yeah. think it has the potential to really take off. Well, there's so many people getting into the space right now. It's yeah. just what what kind of. Um, what kind of things are people asking you? Like, are you are you getting requests to say, can you tr do something like this or can you do something like that? Is it um, is that kind of stuff we just talked about? Or it, well, the flame weeder has been a big one because I, yeah. I have when, when I talk to customers on the phone, it's it's fairly common to to get that question. What what's the next thing? What are you guys working on? Yeah, I, really common actually. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I would say the biggest request for the greens harvester. Um, is make it so you can stand up. Yeah. Um, because everybody looks at it and says, Man, I don't want to have to bend over. Yeah. Um, and we've we've thought about that and kind of thought about how we can address it. Um, at this point, we've decided until we make a full 30 inch wide one that would, or, or maybe even wider, that would cut a full bed and be kind of a push model. Yeah, like a lawnmower um, type yeah, thing. And, and yeah, and that's definitely in the you know in the pipeline um, that, I think that would be I think there's amazing. enough people that are doing greens on a big enough scale that yes. they would pay the extra for a, a couple push thousand bucks or something yeah, like that exactly. yeah yeah um, yeah but for the handheld one we, we experimented a little bit and it was extremely awkward when the handle was three feet long you know because it, I can it imagine put, it put a lot more force on your wrist yeah because it's, it's um, going to bend you're not you're not it, you're not gonna have the it, it Power, doubled it the doubled leverage. the amount of stress it put on your wrist right. easily. Yeah. And then when it comes to dumping it, you couldn't just hold the same handle and dump it. You have to kind of shift again and reach down. And right. That sort of thing. And so we pretty quickly dumped that idea, and we've just um, you know tried to just ignore people who complain yeah. and complain and complain. <laughs> exactly. Because, um, the reality is it saves you hours of being on your hands and knees, and I think that's good enough. That's good enough. Point. It's good enough um, for now. Yeah. But yeah, we are thinking about a push model that would get you up in a vertical stance, but it's just complicated because then you have to have uh, you know, a little bit of a conveyor to pull it up and, and dump right. it into larger totes. That's stuff, right. Yeah. Which yeah. is it's not a big deal, but it's going to cost quite a bit more than you know, five hundred and fifty. Yeah. Bucks. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, flame meters is a big one. Uh, then you know you always get those people that are like you need to make a strawberry picker or something and right, you know, it's, it's like a, yeah just, there's a lot of ideas that yes it would be cool but the the logistics of it's just yeah it's not really that great um, yeah so there's some other things like we were we want to put energy into um some some post harvest stuff like maybe a, a, a better option for like a root crop washer yeah um because I, I don't feel, in my mind, there's still not a good solution. Right. There, no, there isn't. Um, you know, there's barrel washers and stuff, but I just, I don't, it's it just, I don't like their design. Yeah, um, yeah. And so, I want to work on stuff like that, but, you know, I can't really think of any one product that we've had a lot of requests for other than the flame. Yeah. Um, and that's just because a lot of people need them and they want them, but they're, they're not ready for them. Right, so right, people right, look right. at a company like us and say, hey, you guys are manufacturing. Make me a flame meter. Yeah. So we're going to do that. Good stuff, Jonathan. I'll leave the links below, guys, if you want to check out Farmer's Friend and some of the products they have. So that's Jonathan. That's the, the Quick Cut Greens Harvester and some of the stuff they're doing there. It's exciting, man. There's a lot of innovation happening in this space right now, and it's super cool and inspiring to see some young folks like these guys crushing it they're making these tools and they're listening to things that farmers are saying and asking for and they're meeting that demand so i hope you guys have found that helpful if you want to see more stuff like this please hit the subscribe button right now like and share these videos with your friends and check out my website theurbanfarmer.co for links to my book my online course my one day workshop and check below in the show notes for links to farmer's friend and some of their products all right talk to you soon